I'm Matt Casey. I'm the owner of Color Surface. We have been serving the Louisville area since 2005. We offer all types of decorative concrete finishes from concrete resurfacing, stamped concrete overlays, concrete staining and design work, as well as custom concrete countertops and epoxy garage floor applications. And we are here today to talk about epoxy garage floor applications and we're going to be going through the process of how we do our garage floors. So come on and we'll show you. Hi, now we're back in the garage and we're going to discuss surface preparation, which is the most important part of any floor application. If you were to go and purchase your over-the-counter kits, they would show you in their flyer scrubbing the floor with a muriatic acid solution or a degreaser with a hand brush or a deck brush and then simply rinsing the floor with a water hose. We do not do that. We do do an acid etch, however we use a heavy duty orbital floor machine that has this heavy duty scrub brush here which you can see the tough bristles so when you put the acid solution down this will scrub heavily into the surface and it will open up the pores and remove the cream or the top of the surface that is left behind so smooth. Then, when all that residue is brought to the surface, we have to rinse the surface. So we use a 3700 PSI pressure washer, which will blast out all remaining dirt or residue that's in the concrete to remove any remaining residue that might become a problem later. Okay, so now that we've told you about the surface prep, let's move forward and show you how we do it. Okay, now we're back. We have completed our surface preparation, which was the acid etch and pressure wash on the floor. So now it's ready for the actual application. So now what we need to do is we need to address these existing cracks that are in the floor. To do so, we use a two-part epoxy flex paste, meaning that there's a part A and a part B. So you have to mix two parts A to one part B. I've already pre-mixed it, so we're ready to go and we're going to use a joint knife or a taping knife to, to smear the uh, epoxy flex paste over the cracks and get down in those. What it will do is it will allow for some expansion of the cracks and give it some flexibility so that as they continue to move over time uh, it will give you some flexibility there that they won't reappear. We have completed filling or sealing the cracks as you can see here with the two-part epoxy flex paste. So now what we have to do is we use a two-part epoxy color coat. This is wheat, which is a light tan color. And then we have these decorative flakes that are quarter-inch pre-blended vinyl paint chips that will be broadcasted onto the wet epoxy. This is an industrial grade, commercial grade epoxy. It's a two component. So once you mix the A and the B, which of course start off as a liquid, they will actually form a solid. So what we're going to do, we've got some short stem walls or vertical foundation walls along with some concrete steps that go into the house. So we're going to do the stem walls and the steps first and then we'll do the flat area of the floor. So let's get started. And this particular epoxy here has a extremely high pigment concentration so it avoids the need for a primer coat where a lot of systems you would have to do two coats of the color in order to hide the substrate but with this you can do one but you have to be careful that you're not spreading it too thin so that you're getting the material on there nice and thick but not where it's puddled or anything and you've got a short window of time before you need to broadcast the flakes so you've got a few minutes Okay, 
Okay, so now that the sides and faces are done, we're going to broadcast it on the flat areas instead. Okay, so now we're rolling out the epoxy. So we cut the floor to a solid color. And we're going to flank this area here. It's just been sitting on the floor for a few minutes. You don't want to try to cover too large of an area. day two we have blown out all the loose flakes and cleaned those up so now we're ready to apply our top coat what we have is a two component polyurethane you got a part A and a part B and then it also has a UV resistant additive that is added to the part A that way the top coat won't yellow or discolor from the sunlight rays especially since we're coating out beyond where the garage door comes down and it will be exposed. Uh, this polyurethane top coat, of course, will protect the floor from staining. So chemicals, gas, oil, stuff gets on the floor, you can clean it right off. And then, of course, it will give it a nice shine and protect the floor for a long time, a lot of years. So let's get started. Okay, now everything is complete. We have finished applying the polyurethane top coat. Um, so what we will do is we'll instruct the homeowners to wait 24 to 36 hours before moving anything light back in onto the floor, and then three days for them to put a vehicle on the floor. So we'll come back in about three days and meet with the homeowners and we'll show you everything then. Okay, now we are back. It's been a few days, so the floor is fully cured and now is in full use. So we just want to cover a couple of basic maintenance tips. Uh, we recommend simple green and water as far as scrubbing the floor and cleaning it out. And then another tool that's good to have is a squeegee. That way you can kind of squeegee out the water and the dirt and everything as it's brought to the surface when you clean it. Uh, so that concludes 
our whole process here. So if you'd like some more information, you can check out ColorSurfaceKY.com or TodayGarageFloors.com. Thank you.